Hey everybody, welcome back to Chanel's Crohn's and Colitis channel where we talk all things Crohn's and Colitis. My name is Chanel and I wanted to pop on today to provide an update to everybody about what I decided to do. I know things were a little up in the air the last time I checked in about what I was going to do as far as the different clinical research studies and what next steps were ever since they canceled my lift procedure. So here I am with some updates. Uh, I did want to provide a little bit of information on the clinical studies that they sent me the information for and uh, just put a little bit uh, of information out there about what these studies do and why they will or will not work for me personally. So the first study that was offered to me to participate in is called the Seeded Cells on Matrix Plug Treating Crohn's Paraanal Fistulas study, also known as STOMP. So in this first clinical trial, they put you under and they take a biopsy either from your abdomen or your thigh, and they take a little bit of fat about the size of an olive, and I will read from the study itself a little further what they do with that. So this fat will be sent to a lab where stem cells will be collected from it and placed within the bioabsorbable plug. Bioabsorbable means that the plug material is not permanent and will be absorbed by the body. The plug will be inserted into your fistula by the doctor. It is expected but not proven that the plug may promote healing of the fistula. So that was option number one. This study, however, does require that you sign up to participate in it for up to 28 months. So for me personally, although this study does sound very cool and like it very well might help the fistula and maybe even heal it up for good, um, signing up to do a clinical study for 28 months while I have a one and a half year old and while uh, we are actively trying this year to get pregnant again just wasn't an option because with this study you do have to agree that you are not going to get pregnant at any point during the study. And of course if I were to participate in the study I would want to complete the study entirely. I wouldn't just want to do it for a few months and then end up pregnant and then have to back out because that would not really be beneficial for myself or the study um, researchers that are conducting, conducting the study. So this one unfortunately was not the greatest option for me due to that timeline. The other clinical study that I was sent, this one is called a prospective multi-center double-blind randomized controlled study evaluating the safety and efficacy of your own blood. There's all this code about it for the management of anal fistulas. So this is a study that I talked about in my previous video where they use your own blood as um, a clotting mechanism within the fistula in hopes that that would repair it. So the way my doctor described it to me is they would, similar to uh, the normal procedures of attempting to repair a fistula that they have uh, nowadays, she would go in, um, seal up the inside end of the fistula, and then inject in your own blood. And the goal would be that your own blood would um, clot, promote healing, close up that fistula. So I'm gonna read a little bit from the study itself. The study is being conducted on an anal fistula treatment that is made from your own blood, the blood clot. The blood clot is created using a device called the study device. The study device is used to create a blood clot applied in the fistula tract and therefore the use of the study device is investigational. Uh, investigational use is one that's not approved by the US FDA and the study will look at two things, whether the new study treatment is safe and how well it works and the blood clot will be compared to a procedure of debridement and suturing the internal opening of the fistula with saline applied to the fistula instead of a blood clot. So that would be if you get put into the placebo group, you uh, don't get the blood, you get saline instead. So this study, um, you would have to sign up for 12 months being part of the study, which was a little more doable with our timeline um, if I did really want to go through with this. 
Uh, however, this one, the way it was worded in the study, was not the most comforting. Uh, of course, if you're gonna be part of a clinical study, there's no proof that it is safe or that it works. Uh, that's kind of the whole point of a clinical study, and that is why you are offering your body, essentially, to science and um, giving them the results to see if this is something that could work on future patients. I love clinical trials. I have been part of them in the past, and I think they're wonderful and so helpful to people in our community who are looking for answers, who previous surgeries have not worked for, they're like me, they don't, they haven't done a surgery yet and they just want something a little less invasive. I think they're great. Um, but I sat down with this information for a long time. I had a call with my doctor. I had a long talk with my husband, with my parents, and just kind of bounced my, my thoughts against uh, different loved ones and thought about the circumstances in my life. And I came to the conclusion, you know, that right now, living with my seton, or as I so endearingly call it, my butt bracelet, um, I have been able to have a normal quality of life. Of course, when I first got it put in, it was a little sore. It was weird to get used to having a rubber band looped through your anus. <laughs> but uh, now that it has been placed, um, for nearly six months now, since August, um, I don't notice it anymore. Of course, it requires a little bit of extra um, cleanup when you use the restroom and you have to consider it more than if you didn't have it, obviously. Uh, but, you know, I am able to work out. I can ride a bike. I can chase my toddler around the house. I can live life normally. And that is just something that I am not willing to sacrifice at the moment. You know, I went into the year thinking that I was going to be recovering from a pretty intense anal surgery. And when that didn't happen, my world was rocked a little bit because my expectations had changed and I didn't know what the future was gonna look like. And it has felt since last May, um, I've been in this mental battle that I'm waiting for the next thing, I'm waiting for the next procedure, I'm waiting for answers, I'm waiting to see if I fall in group A or group B, uh, if I do do this surgery, how long is recovery gonna be and is that gonna run into certain events that we have planned? And being just always concerned in the back of my mind how I'm gonna fix this, when it's gonna be done, what the recovery time and period is gonna look like, and. It's been nonstop just agony in the back of my mind at all times <laughs> um, for almost a year now. And there was something very peaceful about the thought of just living with my seton until further notice. So when I spoke to my doctor, I told her that I reviewed the two different clinical studies and I let her explain a little further information to me about those. Although I think they're wonderful, I think if you are in a place in life to participate in these clinical studies, if you happen to be local to the Los Angeles area, I would highly recommend you reach out to your doctor and ask if this is something you are able to participate in if you qualify. I do think it's unfortunate that I'm not able to do it, but it just isn't a good time. It's not a good time. And I came to terms with that, I accepted it, and now I cannot tell you how at peace I am mentally with that decision. Because again, since last May, it feels like I have just been nonstop trying to figure out what the next steps are. And now I just get to live my life. I had the doctor explain how living with a permanent seton looks, and it doesn't look much different than everything I'm doing now. Um, there's going to be a couple extra considerations uh, when and if I get pregnant again. And most likely that will lead to uh, delivering the baby via C-section because there is just the risk that if you push the baby out vaginally and then if you tear down to where the seton is, that, that obviously would not be good. So they try and just omit that risk entirely by going with a c-section. So for the future, I don't know um, how that's gonna look for now. I have a permanent seton until further notice. So 
If anyone at any point has questions about that or you are also living with a permanent seton and just want to reach out in solidarity or if you have further questions about the studies i do have um, the pdfs that have all the information on it so um i'm happy to answer any further questions about those if you have questions so that's my little life update but i hope everyone is doing well and i'll continue to provide updates on my life as they come so thanks again for tuning into my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on CCCC TV.